Hi, and welcome to another Commodore 64 programming video. Um, I just wanted to put out a short video um, that I hope you'd be interesting to, to those of you who haven't seen something like, like this before, or for a while. I mean, if you're interested in Commodore 64 programming, then you've probably seen dozens of these types of types of videos. So it's going to be a comparison between a simple basic program and then the equivalent written in assembly language. Um, you probably don't need any convincing of the speed virtues, the speed difference of, uh, of programming in assembly compared to basic, but assembly is a lot more difficult, especially if you come from basic. I think if you started out with assembly, you wouldn't know any better, and um, you'd be stunned by how simple basic is. You know, the other way around, it could be quite a, a step up. So you might, you know, hopefully find it useful to see how you do the basic program in assembly, and fun to see the speed difference, and anyway, whatever. Um, I'm gonna try and record this live and, minim and have minimal editing, you know, just so you can see a program being coded live and you know um i'll try and keep the video sh as short as i can so you know um i don't ramble on too long you lose interest i am working on if you've seen my one pong video which is a um basic commodore 64 basic version of uh or yeah variant of the game pong you know, for one player um you'll see how how slow basic is yeah it looks quite nice but it's uh you know it was simple to write because it was in basic but very slow. Um, I'm working on an assembly version of that, which will probably be too quick, um, such as the speed difference. But in the meantime, and without further ado, let's uh, let's get on with this. So, what this program is going to do is ask the user to press a, a character on the keyboard, and then it will fill the screen with that character. So, the first thing I like to do is clear the screen, and instead of writing shortcuts like I could, instead of writing print, I could put a question mark. And the computer would turn that into the, the statement print. But for readability, so you can follow along um, if you're new to programming completely. Um, I'll just type the statements out and leave nice spaces everywhere so that it, yeah, it's just easier to read. So on the Commodore 64, if you print the um, character that's represented by the number 147, it will clear all it'll clear the screen of all text. Okay, so if I just run that now, you can see that happens and then the program ends, so you get the ready prompt again. But all the, all the if I just run it again, yeah, you see, it just clears the, the screenable text. So let's get the listing back up. Okay, um, next thing we're going to do is ask the user for input. So we can say press any key or run stop to quit. Now I'm using the Vice emulator. Um, so run stop is mapped to the escape key, but, you know, just to keep the parlance um, in Commodore 64 terms, I'll, I'll use the word run stop rather than escape. So let's just check if that works. Yes. And now we actually need to ask the user for the input. So 30, we are going to get. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using input as opposed to get input, puts a question mark on the screen and a, and a cursor. Well, we'll do both, so. I'm just gonna store it in, an, in a, a string variable called A. Um, and then a little if statement, if A, so we get a little infinite loop while we're waiting for the user to input something. So if A is nothing, we're gonna to go to 30. We're gonna keep waiting. Let's run. So you see, you get the question mark and the flashing, flashing cursor block when we use input. And we have to press enter afterwards to submit our uh, our entry. If we change input to get, we don't get that. And as soon as we press a key, it instantly enters that and you know returns it to the that, that key press back to the program. It would store it in a so or a dollar. So you can see I'd press the letter K. Because uh, that doesn't get cleared out just because the program ends. Okay, so let's uh, carry on. So we're going to ask the user for that. Once we've got that, we need to... Because you can't poke string variables to the screen or poke them into memory. So I'm going to need to convert the character that's been pressed on the keyboard 
to the the number. So you can see I've got print CHR147 in the in the brackets there. I need to get the number for whatever key has been pressed. Okay, so I'm going to store that in B. B with no no dollar symbol afterwards means it's going to be an integer, a whole number. So B is going to be equivalent to the ASCII representation or the ASCII number of the A string. Uh, yeah, let's run that. So I'm going to press E. If I print a dollar, but E, if I print B, I get 69. So that has worked. So we're going to get that. Okay, line 50. We're going to have a for loop. Now the screen is made up of Commodore 64 text mode screen is made up of 1,000 squares. So it's 40 uh, columns along by 25 rows um, high. Um, so you multiply 25 by 40 and you get 1,000. Now computers start counting from zero. That's just the way it is. Um, so this for loop is going to be, I'm going to use n as the variable. Um, 0 to 999, so that's 1,000 inclusive. We are now going to poke 1,024, which is the first space, the first memory location for screen memory. So that will be the very upper left here. That, so where you can see press ID key, the P for press, it will be in the space directly above that. We're going to poke into that, wherever is held in B. And then... Hang on, because that will just poke that into that space a thousand times. What we need to do is thousand twenty-four plus n. So the first time through the loop, it will be zero. So it'll be a thousand and twenty-four. It'll be a thousand twenty-five, thousand and twenty-six onwards. We're going to poke b into that next. I think that's us done. I'm going to press j. Ah, so what's happening here then? Well, what is happening is on the Commodore 64, uh, each key has it can represent different a couple of different characters usually. Now, on the keyboard that I'm using on this computer, because I'm using an emulator, I don't know, uh, I, I can't work that out quickly to know, you know, what it thinks I've pressed. But I do happen to know that it, to get the alphabet, it's offset by 64. Um, so I need to, whatever B is, I need to deduct 64 from it to get the actual, the letter of the key that, that was pressed. Can I just do this? I'm going to press J when it asks me. Yes. No, I'm not timing that, but it's pretty slow. That's got to have been the better part of 10 seconds to fill the screen there. Try again. Yeah, about 10 seconds. So that's great. Um, we can, we've got, we've achieved the goal of, of making the, uh, you know, a program that asks the user for input and then fills the screen with that input. Um, you could just do a couple of things to enhance the program, maybe. I like black and white contrast. So what I'm going to do here is at the very start, before we even clear the text off the screen, I'm going to poke into the memory location for the, I think that's the border. I'm going to poke in the value zero, which is black. And I'm going to poke in backgrounds, the memory location for the background color, I'm going to poke a zero in there, and then I'm going to poke a zero into the memory location for the text, sorry, poke a one in the memory location for the text color, so that should give us white text on black background and black border, indeed. Now once it's completed filling the screen, we could go back and ask, you know, get it to wait for another key press. 
So it doesn't just have to end after it's gone through once. So let's do that. 60 go to 30. We don't need the instruction again. We know what's, uh, what's expected of us. Yep, that works fine. Now, as exciting as it is watching the screen fill out with characters this way, that we, we can't, you know, can't really go any further than this, or, you know, I don't think we need to. So, let's uh, write the equivalent program in assembly. So this is Visual, Visual Studio Code with Kick Assembler C64 extension installed, which just makes um, syntax highlighting and error, error spotting, you know, a bit easier. It will assemble to the Commodore 64 debugger I've got installed, which might look a bit scary when you see that running, but just ignore it. Just look at the screen representation. Um, I like to use that because I can see then in real time how a, a program is running. And I'll, I'll, I'll briefly show you that, but without too much rambling, let's uh, carry on. So with the uh, assembly, we have to we have to worry about where we're going to put a program into memory. Whereas with basic, we just let the, the basic interpreter, let the Commodore 64 handle all of that for us. But here we have to put it somewhere in memory. So we uh, specify that by using an asterisk equals, um, and we put a hex number. Uh, for memory, and I use a thousand. I'm going to use a thousand in this case, which translates to a four thousand and ninety six in hexadecimal. Sorry, a thousand hexadecimal, which, which translates into four thousand ninety six decimal. So when we're on the color sixty four and the programs in memory, we would type sys four zero nine six, and that would start executing code starting at that memory location. So we've done that. Now, what was the first thing uh, we got the program to do was to set the border and the background color to black and the text to white. So you can't have multiple commands on the same line in, in assembly. Each one has its own has its own line. Don't have line numbers either. So although you can see line numbers down the side here, that's really just for our reference, the, the programmer's reference. Um, the computer, the the assembler doesn't use those. They use labels. So we're going to start with start a label called start. So we're going to do the setup, if you like, of the program in this in this section. Then when we reference start, it, the, the computer will just jump to wherever start begins in memory. We don't have to worry about adding line numbers and running out of line numbers. So that's one kind of advantage, I think, of assembly. Well, including the speed as well. Um, okay, so we're going to clear the screen, and we're going to do that using a kernel routine which just means a built-in function of the Commodore 64. So JSR means jump to subroutine, and I just so happen to know that that's at memory location uh, hex E544. So that will clear the, the screen for us. Um, yeah. Uh, it will clear the screen of all text, I should say. Um, there's a difference. We won't need to cover that in this in this video. So we're going to do that, then we're going to store, we're going to, uh, change the border and background colors. So I'm going to load a, the accumulator, uh, which is a, a register that you do maths with, but you can just store, store numbers in it as well. Same as the X and Y register, but I'm going to use accumulator, load accumulator with the number zero for black. I'm going to store that in the memory location that handles the border color and the background color. So remember, for the basic program, it was 53280, 53281. Well, this is the hexadecimal equivalent. And we're also, oh no, now we're going to load A with the code for white, which is 1. Store that in 0286. Don't know if I need the 0 or not, actually, but that should set, the, clear the screen and set set the colors. Okay, well I'm also going to do here because I know that I'm going to need to use a loop and I'm going to need to count through the loop like with the for loop um, in basic. I'm going to load x with 0x is another register. I'm going to use that for, for counting in this case. You know, I'm pretty sure I don't need the double zero or the leading 
zero. It's just assumed. Um, yeah. So we're going to do that, and that should be us set now. So the screen will be clear, the colors will be set. We now need to ask the user for input. So let's have, uh, we need to put a, have a message. So intro text, use a text specifier here, and that the assembler then will, will convert everything in the speech marks afterwards into the actual numerical code you know the hex code for the for the characters that are, that are are typed in here so it saves us a lot of time so please this is a feature of kick assembler please uh, please press any key or run stop to quit now we want it to know it's reached the end when it reaches a zero and intro loop okay so what we're going to do is load accumulator with the intro text and that will be the first character will be stored in x at position zero I'm going to store that in the screen memory location, the first screen memory location, which in hex it's not 1024, like on basic it's 400 hex. We have an offset of x again, so it's zero, because we're going to loop up incrementing each time. Um, once we've reached the end of the of the of the text, we use a branch if equals so and a branch if equal to zero, um, if the zero flag, is, well, if x is zero, um, okay, uh, where are we going to go? We're going to go to quit, which just returns us to basic. However, we haven't finished displaying the message. I'm going to increment x just by one. And I'm going to do this intro loop again, only this time around x will have incremented. And it'll keep incrementing all the way through this until it's done and it hits the zero. Then this will be true. So a branch if x is zero. And uh, It will just quit. I think we should probably see if this works. So I have to type sys4096. It does work. Although the text didn't change color until after. That's interesting. I think that's because the screen wasn't refreshed. So if we do the color change first, which to be fair and basic, that's what we did. We did all the color changing, then we cleared the screen of text. Uh, that should solve that problem. Let's see. Sys4096. <laughs> nope. Did I not save it? Was that the problem? That was the problem. Well, now I'm missing the P. <sighs> Seriously. I don't think that has any influence on the X register. It's like X has got a one in there or something. Yeah, what do you know? Okay, um, so this subroutine must 
use X within it, and uh, therefore the you know it was interfering. So there we go. So that works. We are getting um we are getting a a funny character, aren't we? At the end, we're getting that symbol at the end. Let me run that again. He'll run stop to quit. Yeah, that's fine. But why are we getting that at the end? Ah, because this check should be done before we output anything to the screen. Because we've already hit it, we'll be storing a bit of extra garbage data to the screen before we branch away. Yep, it really is this complicated, folks. Just for the most simple programs. We're not really seeing any of that lightning speed that's promised yet, are we? Um, okay. So, uh, that's all well and good. Um, we don't want to be quitting just as soon as that message is printed. We want to be doing something else. So, the good thing about labels and that in assembler is it doesn't matter where, I, you know, I could start right back up the top here if I wanted to. For for the sake of flow and good practice, you kind of keep them in order. Um, but I tend to have things like quit and any text label, you know, text sections um, and sprite data or whatever kept separately down the bottom. Um, so I'm going to put this next one in in here, which is going to be, um, we need to wait for the user, it was the if statement, it was well, the get statement, sorry, get a dollar symbol, and then keep asking for it if nothing if nothing is pressed, you know, keep waiting. So let's just see how that works um, in assembler. So get input, what we're going to use is another built-in kernel function, uh, which is at memory location FFE4. So that is the equivalent of get, um, you can't specify where or variable it's going to be stored in, it will be just be stored in the accumulator, in the A register. So we're going to compare that to zero. Okay, so if nothing is pressed, zero is that at symbol, you know, uh, represented by that at symbol that you we saw previously when I was having that when we that we had at the end of the uh, intro text because it's printed in an extra character. It's just whatever happened to be in memory. So anyway, if it's zero branch if equal uh, back to get input so if nothing this is that whole get a dollar if a dollar is zero go to the same line number so it's uh, it's about the same kind of length it's just not as in intuitive until you get used to it um, but that's what we're doing here okay so let's say something was pressed how are we going to know if it's the run stop key? We do another compare. And I happen to know that 103 is run stop or, or escape. If it is, so branch if equal, so it's saying go to if equal, quit. Okay. Anything else, it must be a, a character to, that we want to, want to use to uh, fill the screen with. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm not going to have, to have time to explain all this if, if I want the video to be short, but we've got to set the carry because we're using, um, so we're going to be subtracting because the, the processor in the C64 can't actually do straightforward addition and subtraction. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not going to go. Just know that if you're subtracting a number, you need to uh, set the carry flag. And then we're going to 
subtract with carry 40, which is that 64. So, you know, I had the ASCII, um, I got whatever the character was and took 64 off of it. Or in hex, that would be 40. So we're taking that off of it here. So we get the correct letter straight away. Um, I'm going to be using the next loop again to fill it to the screen. So we've got our input now. If there's no jump you know, branch away, away from this, execution will just continue at the next, uh, from the next label, the next command, you know, it'll ignore this and just start executing the commands under it. Okay, so it will, it will flow kind of linearly um, if we're not redirecting execution um, ourselves. So we're going to, we've got to fill the screen up now, haven't we? So we're going to store the, store the accumulator, which, which will be filled with whatever letter is, you know, key has been pressed into screen memory an offset of X, which would be zero. So it would just be 1,024, 0,400. There's pretty clever ways of doing this. Well, yeah, okay. Don't want to be too too, too clever. Um, I'm going to show you the results as, as we go. So we'll restore it, uh, the accumulator into screen memory. We're going to increment X, so the next time around it will, it will fill the adjacent square, yeah, adjacent, yeah, square on the screen. Um, branch if not equal, back to screen fill, so we're to carry on until we get back to zero, um, which will be when X overflows from 255, which is the maximum number, back to zero. And we'll see the results of that in a moment. And then we will, well, let's jump back to get input. Because then that should have the effect of just kind of freezing until uh, the user presses another key. And obviously if they yeah, quit, if I press an escape, they can do so. Unscripted videos are poor. Press any key or run something. Press O. Okay, P. So we've got half or one third maybe of a program. You know, works fine. You know, I think under here I'm also going to clear the screen on exit. This. Is Four, nine, now look on the left here, you can see the loop. So we've raced past start. This is the currently current command being executed. You can see we're in a loop. It's lightning quick, isn't it? It's constantly looping around, get input. We're waiting for the, the user to input something. So when we do that, I mean, you don't see it jump on the left here to screen fill because it's just so fast. But that is what is happening. Okay. And there we go, where we break the program, break out of it, we're also clearing the screenable text. How do you feel, why isn't it filling the whole screen? If we're incrementing X, well, I kind of mentioned what the, the, the problem is. On 8-bit computers, the maximum number you can store in a single register is uh, 255. Now, if all the bits are set to 1, that equals 255. You add another one, it overflows back to zero, but then a carry flag is set often um, so that you know you know the overflow has happened. Don't worry about that. Um, we know the screen's a thousand characters. If 255 is the maximum that we can put in one register, what do we do? You know, because we need to count up beyond that. But what we do is is to Manually add on 255 to 0400 so that we start there. And it's as simple as doing that. We haven't actually got to open a calculator and work out this new starting memory location. We can just use this plus whatever that number is, plus 255 decimal, an offset of X. 
So let's just make sure we're on the right path here. Okay, you can see we are. So I'm not going to count each square, but wherever 255 was, what's actually happening, far too fast for us to see, is it's, it's printing the character there and there, or wherever it is, and then it'll increment one and print there and there. So it's actually filling the screen up from two places at once, if you like, uh, but far too fast for us to have to worry about or care, but, but that's, that is what's happening. Um, because in this loop, you see we're storing the accumulator, the, the letter there, 0400, and then we're storing at 0400 plus 255 with an offset of X, then increment an X and do it, doing it again, whatever, doesn't really matter. What we now need to do is uh, add 255 again, which we will do in this case by 0400 plus, what was 255 times 2? 510. Okay, so let's do that. Ooh. Nearly there now, aren't we? So we're now to the final one. Now X is going up to 255 each time. So what we don't want to do is add another 255 and then another 255. Or we'll end up overflowing um, the, the screen area. So what we need to do is a thousand less 255 to give us what the location should be, which is 744. And that, I think, is our program. And I'm sure it's been obvious all the way through my prattling on that the speed difference is insane, isn't it? Whereas it would take, you know, seven se uh, 10 seconds to fill the screen. That is instant, isn't it? It's like, yeah, much less than a single second. So there you go, hope you've learned something, and uh, see you next time.